if you're anything like me and you've been working on a woodworking project for a while, when it comes time to glue up the project, I always worry about using too much or not enough clamping pressure. I always worry about touching the project too soon after the glue up actually happens. And so I ran a little experiment here to find out how much clamping pressure do you actually need and how long do you have to wait to touch that project after you've glued it in order to get the most best results out of the project. So here's the plan. I'm gonna to go to my local hardware store and pick up a pine board, uh, one by 10 in size, and I'm gonna bring it home and I'm gonna cut it into three inch strips and then I'm going to cut each of those three inch strips into pieces that are 10 inches long, leaving me with a whole bunch of three by 10 pieces of wood. Then I'm gonna take each one of those pieces of wood and I'm gonna glue them up in a variety of ways. I'm gonna vary the amount of pressure that I apply when it comes time to glue up. And then I'm going to vary the amount of time I let the wood sit before I actually test it out. The different pressures I'm gonna use, the first is no pressure at all. Uh, the second is tape only. I'm gonna use blue painter's tape. And the third is clamping those up uh, as I normally would. Uh, I'm gonna start with one hour, three hours, six hours, 12 hours, and then 24 hours. But you'll see that I don't actually need anything past three hours with the wood that I was using. And I'm gonna test each setup three different times. So here's me getting the wood ready. Uh, I'm gonna set up the table saw. I'm gonna measure everything out, uh, make sure that everything gets cut right. Uh, this took a long time to film, but I'm just gonna speed it up so that you can see what's happening here uh, in a real hurry. So here's me ripping the boards down to three inches in width. Uh, in retrospect, I should have made them a little bit longer. Uh, because it took nearly all of the weight that I had in order to break these boards once we got up to full strength. So if I were to do this again, I would cut them to maybe four or five inches in, in length so that I could apply more pressure without needing more weight. And here I am using my miter saw to cut these boards to about 10 inches in length. You see I've got a handy stop block set up there so that I can cut them to an exactly equal length every time. One of the things that I would love some help with uh, when I cut these boards on the miter saw, whenever I raise the miter saw up, it tends to grab the boards that are on the right side of the miter saw here, uh, which to me feels a little bit dangerous. It really only happens when I'm using a stop block like this. So what I tend to do is wait for the saw to completely stop moving when it's all the way down and then pull it up. That way I don't have the boards flip out or go crazy as the, as the saw comes up. But it would be great if someone could leave in the comments some ideas about how to uh, how to prevent the uh, you know dangerous situation of these boards getting grabbed in the saw when the stop block is being used. And now over to the jointer. Got to get these boards exactly flat on one side uh, so that I can machine a perfectly square edge on them. Um, so I'm using the jointer here to get these things perfectly flat. One thing that you might notice here is that I'm using a stick of beeswax to uh, lubricate the, the table, the bed of the jointer. Turns out this is tremendously helpful. Makes the board slide through much, much easier. So this is a great tip if you find yourself using a jointer and the boards seem tough or sticky as you're trying to push them through. The beeswax just makes them really glide through. And here's my pile of boards. So there's 48 of them. Turns out I didn't need nearly that many. Now typically what you would do is after you flatten the first side, you would go back to the jointer and make that edge next to the side perfectly 90 degrees uh, with the edge that you just flattened. But I got a little excited and went over to the thickness planer to get everything of equal thickness. And then I'll go back over and square up the edges. And now over to the jointer to make that edge perfectly square with the two flat parallel edges. One of the things you may not notice here is that when I run these boards through the jointer, I'm keeping the, the square edge all on the same side because uh, you got to keep track of which side that edge is on because those are the edges that you want to glue together. The whole point of doing this is to make sure that you've got four 90 degree angles and so keeping track of where those angles are is really important. 
And now I'm gonna run these boards through the table saw to make that last edge perfectly square so that I've got uh, some boards that are all dimensioned and perfectly square so that my glue ups work optimally. So the final dimension of these boards ended up being 10 inches long by 5 eighths of an inch thick by 2 and 3 quarters inches wide. So for this experiment, we're going to be using Type Bond 3 uh, in the green bottle. This is the one that I uh, most frequently use and we're going to use it for all the glue ups today. First thing we're going to glue up is the tape. Uh, I find this to be a very reliable method and also convenient because you don't have to worry with clamps. Uh, it's easy to move the pieces once you actually get them glued up and the tape is springy enough that you can actually tape things down and put a fairly decent amount of clamping pressure on it without having to apply clamps that are, that are going to scar up your wood. Uh, be heavy and in the way and so on. Now the technique here uh, is to, wh what I always do is just spread the glue uh, pretty evenly. I buy these cheap paint brushes, uh, acid brushes off of Amazon. And then I apply the glue and I push and rub the pieces of wood together. That way you don't have to apply it to both sides. And then as you put the tape down, I stretch it out to put that tape under pressure so that once you apply it, then it actually holds the wood together in place. Now you have to apply the tape to both sides because after you put the tape down uh, and stick it down, the, the tension on the tape will actually pull that joint together more on one side than the other. Uh, so similar to using clamps on both sides, if you're going to use this taping method, then you have to put tape on both sides, otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, and you can actually see the wood pull apart on that opposite side once you've got the tape down on the first side. Now I intended all along to cut a thin groove in these pieces so that I could have a consistent place to hang the bucket that I was going to use for the test, but I forgot to do that until after I did the taping glue up. So here you see me going in and cutting that slot uh, in all the different pieces uh, so that I can have consistent results. And you see I'm using a stop block there so that it's an equal space from the edge of the board. And now it's time to glue up the boards that won't have any clamping pressure of any kind applied to them. This is crazy. Uh, I've never done this before. I have no idea how it's going to turn out, um, but here it is. It feels super weird to be gluing boards together and then just leaving them laying there on the counter, but uh, that's what I do. And I just offload them onto a thin sheet of uh, MDF and move it off to the side uh, to dry. And the last glue up that we're going to do is just the traditional approach. Uh, I'm just taking some bar clamps. These are really great. I bought these at Home Depot. Uh, they just attach directly to kind of standard uh, plumbing black pipe. Uh, they're, they're pretty inexpensive and they work really, really good. So I'm going to get these to uh, about finger tight on these clamps. Uh, just kind of the standard clamping pressure that would use uh, to get this glue up done. And you can see here that I don't actually have enough clamps to do all of the uh, pieces that I'm doing and I end up using some outrageously long clamps for this project uh, I wanted to use the same manufacturer the same type of clamp for this whole process and I just didn't have that many so uh, That's just one of the drawbacks of using clamps Now here's the setup that I'm going to use and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and slide the pieces underneath this the top piece of wood here uh, and that's going to hold them in place and I'm going to hang a bucket full of weight off of the edge of each of the pieces. But first I need to cut them into three inch sections. The first test is on the taped section uh, that has been drying for only one hour. Uh, I anticipated that this wouldn't be particularly strong. Uh, I was actually surprised by how much weight it held up. Uh, the way I'm doing the weight is with a bucket of water. So I've got a five gallon bucket that I'm gonna hang off of the edge of this thing and I'm gonna slowly fill it up with water so that uh, when the board breaks, then I can just weigh the bucket on a bathroom scale and then I'll know how much, how much weight it was able to hold. Now for all of the blocks that were tested at one hour, the glue joint nearly always failed. 
Uh, so the board itself wasn't breaking, it was actually the joint, uh, which tells me the glue wasn't really set up all the way. Um, you can see here it broke cleanly along that glue joint, but what tended to happen was that it you'd leave it under stress for a little bit, and then after a while it would break all of a sudden. Um, so that, that joint was slowly weakening over time. Now, what really surprised me here is that I was running out of room in this bucket. So after just one hour, with using only tape to hold these boards together, they were holding up nearly 40 pounds of water. Um, so that was shocking to me. So here's the final results. We've got 34.3 pounds, 39.9 pounds, and 34.1 pounds. What ended up happening is that I ended up having to use pots and pans in addition to the water. Uh, and that and that increased the max weight by about 10 pounds. And that turned out it was more than I needed for this particular experiment. So I didn't have to do anything crazy. So here are the results for the clamped board after one hour. And it looks like we got about a 9.1 pound increase in the average uh, weight that could be held. Now what you see here is the three hour test on the taped board. And what you're starting to see is that the boards are actually breaking on the wood and not on the glue seam, which means that at this point, the actual seam is stronger than the wood itself. Now I'm just gonna blaze through the rest of these. You can see them all on the screen here, and I'll just put the data up for you. But there is some pretty alarming and astounding stuff that's happening here. Okay, so we only have a few data points here, so Google Sheets is gonna work great. Uh, and any day with a spreadsheet is a good day. Uh, so I'm just going to calculate a few statistics here and pull together some results to show you what uh, ended up happening. A few surprising things here. Uh, at one hour, all three of the different trials were breaking on the seam. Uh, but at three hours, all three cases, the wood and not the seam was breaking. Having said that, uh, there is a consistent pattern here. If you don't use clamps, it's the least strong. If you do use clamps, it's the most strong. Uh, but a couple of things really surprised me. First thing was that the boards that were glued together with no clamping pressure whatsoever were actually reasonably strong. Uh, the difference between the, uh, the boards after three hours with no tape, no clamps, no nothing, and the fully clamped pieces, the average difference was only about six pounds uh, between their, their ability to hold weight. So I was really surprised by that. I thought that the, the boards that were just literally laying next to each other on the table would have almost no strength. And it turns out they're just nearly as strong as uh, boards that were fully clamped. The other thing that was really surprising to me is that tape worked nearly as well as uh, clamps. So, and it was tremendously more convenient. Uh, you can easily pick up the boards, uh, you can stack them nicely uh, without having big clamps sticking out and, and being all over the place. Uh, tape is substantially more convenient, so I think it's gonna work very well for light glue up projects. In cases where the boards are very, very thick or very, very heavy, tape may not be as good. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the experiment. Uh, I hope you took something away from it. So drop me a comment. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think about this, if you thought it was surprising. Uh, if you have any other methods of clamping things together uh, during glue ups, I'd love to hear about those. I'm always trying to learn and become better at what I'm doing here. So yeah, leave me a comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for everything. Bye.